Hi, I am Stacy Benj, and when I was teaching pre-K, I used to let the parents in my classroom know not to expect craft projects to come home. So this is an example of a typical craft project you might see in a preschool classroom. This was done by my son when he was two years old. And yes, it is super cute, but it's about near perfect, which means my son had nothing to do with this project. This is his teacher's work. Now she used my son's hand as the centerpiece, but my son did not participate at all, which meant he learned nothing in the process. So it's a very product-based project. And that's why I always avoided craft projects and worksheets and flashcards in my classroom because they were not process-based work. They did not allow for children to learn through the process of interacting with the material or through the process of trying to create something. So my classroom was very learning center based, very open-ended. I selected materials intentionally to go into my centers, but it was up to the children to choose how they played with it and what they wanted to create because I believe that children learned through the process of that. This also included my art center where I would put paper and crayons and, and glue and scissors and the children could, could choose what they wanted to create. So I had one year a parent brought in a big box of the uh, dot matrix uh, printer paper. And if you remember that, it had the perforated edges down the sides with the little dots in them. And so I was super excited to get that big box of paper because I used paper throughout my classroom. Um, but my kids were playing while I pulled that box out and I was taking those edges off. And two little boys in the block center were watching me and they were very intrigued by those edges. And being like any good pre-K teacher, I took those edges, put them in a box and put them into my art center. And when I did that, those two little boys cleaned up their block center, grabbed their name tags, and went to the art center. And they started to create this robot. And they started using the edges. You know, they started talking about how they could use those edges to create the robot. Then they started talking about where the robot was going to come from. And what did his spaceship look like? And was he going to come to Earth? What was he gonna do when he got to Earth? And they spent 45 minutes creating this robot and coming up with this phenomenal story about him. When they were finished, they brought it over to me and I said, man, I can tell that you guys worked hard on this. Can you tell me about it? And they told me their whole story. I had a piece of paper and I filled that entire piece up with the story that they told me about. That year I had a bulletin board that was designated for only original artwork. So I took the robot over there, we put it on the bulletin board and stapled the story right next to it. Later on that afternoon when the parents showed up to pick the boys up, I was like, look at what your children created today. And let me kind of preface with saying they worked super hard on this robot, but it was kind of scrappy looking. We had those perforated edges going everywhere. It was pretty tall. It was pretty wide. So it's not the typical thing that you would see on Pinterest to do in your classroom, but it was their original work. And so the parents kind of looked at it and they weren't quite sure how to respond. And I said, this is original artwork that your children created. And when I said it that way, they were all like, oh, how sweet. And then I went on to tell them the reason I, uh, I allow for this is because of all the outcomes that it creates. And I listed for them from a cognitive standpoint, we had problem solving, trial and error. We also had the attention to a task. They spent 45 minutes working on this project and it wasn't because I was making them. It was because they wanted to and they were guiding it. They were driving it. So they stuck with it a little bit longer from a language standpoint. We had the conversation, the social language going back and forth. As they were creating the robot, they were using very descriptive and positional vocabulary words. And from that literacy standpoint, I had an amazing writing sample for them when they were finished. Granted, I did the handwriting, but that was their story that I helped them put on paper. 
Also, from the physical standpoint, you know, they were walking around the table, they were having to reach across, so they were crossing midlines, using range of motion. They were using eye-hand coordination as they were using the glue and the scissors. Their brain was learning how much uh, muscle strength to use when pulling the tape off and then pressing it on to um, the robot that they were creating. And then from the social and emotional standpoint, the cooperative learning, the taking turns, the peer interaction, and then the pride, the pride that I valued their work so much that I displayed it on a board. And that, that was probably the best thing to see was how excited and how proud they were that their original artwork was being displayed for everyone to see. So I explained to the parents, so not only have we hit all these outcomes, but it, it came from, you know, your children just grabbing some paper and edges and tape and glue and creating a robot. Had I cut pieces of paper and squares and rectangles and said, make a robot, we wouldn't have had the same experience. Had I done a dot to dot worksheet of some sort, we would not have had the same outcomes. Had I done some sort of flashcards, we would not have met the same ob uh, objectives. So by me allowing this process-based experience, we met all of these outcomes. And I know as a teacher, we have to worry about documenting and assessing you know, a, a lot of things. And that leads me to my next point. You know, I mentioned that these boys were working 45 minutes on the robot. Sometimes as a teacher, you direct activities, sometimes you facilitate, and sometimes you just set the environment and get out of the way. And this was a time I needed to stay out of the way. But I got my notebook and I started taking notes. And I started writing down, because I was familiar with my classroom objectives, I was familiar with my outcomes. So I started noting, you know, how were they holding the scissors? Uh, were they able to, to do the tape? What words were they using? You know, what, 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 was there anything that they were struggling with? But I got a lot of documentation and a lot of evidence of skills that they were mastering or that they were still developing. And so I took those notes. I also took copies of the writing sample I got of them. And I put that in their portfolios because I kept a portfolio for every child. And then when it came time for me to put my formal assessment together, I was able to use that documentation as evidence of that child's progression. So it was wonderful that I was able to get real life experience, uh, real life evidence that these children, you know, were progressing with these skills. And so, you know, that's, that's way more authentic and it's also more developmentally appropriate. And so I saw them in their natural element and I was able to say, yes, they are able to apply these skills or yes, we see this developing. So it was done in a very natural environment. So just another great reason to allow for the process-based experiences in your classroom. So as you're uh, embarking upon this, let me encourage you, uh, you know, to spend time watching children play or watch them in a process-based experience and maybe kind of take a running record and go, okay, what are all the things that they're learning? You know, am I really looking deep into this? And you'll be surprised at how many of the outcomes you will see that they are meeting. Um, you know, as you're going through this process, let me know if you have any questions or any advice for me that I can help you with, um, because I am very passionate about, you know, children playing and learning through the process. So I definitely help, you know, love to encourage you with that. But let me know if you have any more questions questions. Um, I would definitely love to answer those. Please check out some of my other videos as well. I have a series on the writing process that looks at how scribbling eventually turns in to conventional writing that we see with the uh, older elementary children. But I wish you well as you're setting up your classrooms and I encourage you to always look for that process-based experience. And like I said, let me know if there's anything else that I can do to help you in this process.